My name is Tomas Ryan. I'm here in Brussels representing FENS. At the European Brain Council's event uh, on promoting brain health in Europe, uh, to communicate their manifesto uh, to the European Parliament that there is no health without brain health. And we're trying to lobby the European Parliament to prioritize brain health and brain research. The situation is that we spend in Europe somewhere between 800 billion and 1 trillion euro per year uh, due to the burden of brain disease. This is going steadily up on account of the COVID-19 pandemic and what long COVID is doing to the brain and therefore to neurological and psychiatric conditions. About 160 million Europeans currently live with some form of a neurological or mental health disorder. And our concern is that we are not investing sufficiently in basic research into the neuroscience of brain health and brain disease in Europe. In the United States, the federal government commits 12 billion tax dollars every year through the NIH uh, for research into brain and brain disorders. We are spending a fraction of that uh, in Europe on the same problems, even though we have equivalent population. So if Europe is to be a serious competitor for the future of neuroscience, it's absolutely imperative that we invest greater resources into basic neuroscience research, both at a European level, but also uh, through individual member states. I think that the neuroscience and brain health advocacy community in Europe is quite complex. And indeed, it's important that we work with our partners and allies from neurology, from psychiatry, from patients' organizations, and so on, so that we can have one unified message about brain health being a priority for the European Union. But at the same time, I think that FENS has a particularly important role in acting as a single voice for neuroscience researchers. We represent 22,000 active research neuroscientists across Europe. And our needs as researchers are to be able to engage in fundamental curiosity-driven neuroscience research in a way that is competitive uh, at an international scale. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that basic research is the first thing that is discussed in any forum where we're talking about brain health uh, or the future of, of brain well-being in Europe. A very salient point that was made today at the European Parliament was that there is no health without brain health. But in order to contribute to better treatments and understanding of brain health and brain disorders, we need to understand fundamentally how the brain works. And we're only going to get closer to understanding how the brain normally works under both conditions of health and disease by increasing our investment in fundamental neuroscience research. So indeed, there is no health without brain health, but equally there is no investment in brain health without investigation, without greater resources and prioritization of basic neuroscience. Because without basic neuroscience, we don't have any understanding of what a healthy brain looks like, and we won't even know where to start when trying to treat these types of disorders in the future. Over the last 15 or 20 years, neuroscience has been changing. We have new methodologies and we're developing new methodologies and we have a new generation of talented young researchers in order to start making progress the likes of which we haven't seen before. I think that this century is going to be the century of the brain. The question is whether that's going to happen in Europe or primarily in the United States. And that's our choice, but we're only going to see significant outcomes in European neuroscience if we invest in it. And that means greater research support and educational support for young neuroscientists. We need to represent ourselves, and this goes all the way down to students, to PhD students, to postdoctoral researchers. Policymakers, uh, administrators, they don't hear from you unless they hear from you. And you need to take it into your own hands to represent neuroscience and to represent your needs. Everybody's concerned about the future of neuroscience. Everybody who works in neuroscience has some opinion or some idea about the way neuroscience should be developing. And everybody agrees that we need better resources in order to improve our scientific outputs. 
that feeling doesn't automatically translate to policymakers or administrators or other organizations. It requires you to go out there and to represent yourself. When we're at Fens Forum or any big scientific meeting, much of the discussions that we have about neuroscience are that we don't have enough funding, that we're unhappy with current structures in universities, that things are not really being supported by our governments uh, as well as they could be. We all agree with each other on this, but we're not doing enough to communicate those needs, those perspectives, and those ideas to politicians, to administrators, and to other organizations who want to hear those ideas, who want to implement those things, who want to find ways of making neuroscience and of making research work for people in Europe. Uh, we all want to develop brain health, improve brain health outcomes uh, in the coming 10, 20, 30 years. And in order to do so, we need to find ways of working collaboratively with policymakers. So I would encourage young scientists, no matter what stage they're at, to reach out to their member society or to reach out to FENS and to look for resources and opportunities uh, about how to inform themselves to best go about advocacy, about how to effectively identify people they should talk to, how to talk to them and communicate what it is that could be done differently in order to make neuroscience uh, a more productive, more happier and more internationally competitive environment in Europe.